All right. Well, thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. And um, yeah, it's my pleasure. I appreciate the invitation and always enjoy these. Boy, what a great ensemble of professional traders. Um, I mean, wow, this kind of opportunity just didn't used to exist. Back in the days of yore, we would have to travel all over the country and, um, you know, to get a group of professional traders together like this, you'd have to travel to a city where all of them were gathered and to be able to do this live and uh, at the same time from the comfort of our own homes and offices, just fantastic. And thank you very much to Traders Talk Live for organizing this, getting everybody together and believe me, we've all got very busy schedules. So that's no small task is to <laughs> find a time when everybody can get together. So thank you for your efforts. All right. Well, um, that's me. I'm Barry Burns with TopDogTrading.com. I'm the owner and founder of the company. I'm the author of Trend Trading for Dummies. I've received Reader's Choice Awards from Stocks and Commodities Magazine. I've also helped some other authors by contributing to their books and book with major trading companies out there. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just so you know that I've been vetted by all these companies to train their traders. And um, so... I'm very proud of that and uh, very thankful that all these companies have uh, brought me on board to work with them. Of course, our legal disclaimers, which I'm sure you've heard before, but we get people coming in and out of these presentations, I understand. So therefore, I just want to post this here one more time because it really is important to understand these legal disclaimers. They come out of people's pain. People got hurt in the markets, and that's why the regulatory requirements have been put into place. So take them very seriously. You know, I think we see them so often we dismiss them, and uh, that's not wise. Read this stuff very carefully. It's really, really important. All right, so my focus today is on market cycles, and market cycles is one of those things that you know, certainly it is taught out there and has been taught for many, many years, but still don't see it given the attention that at least I feel it deserves. And the reason I say that is, well, a chart has two dimensions, right? It's a two-dimensional object. We've got our time axis and our price axis. And most traders are very focused on price, and that's great. We should be. But uh, that's about it. So they look at price Candle bar, or, you know, candlesticks. They look at support resistance levels, which is price, indicators based on price, and all that stuff's cool. But there's another whole dimension of time, the x-axis, and that's the only other dimension we got. So it's 50% of the information on the chart. So you know what happens? How this affects us practically as traders is people say things like, "Well, you know, I got in to an uptrend." And then as soon as I got in, I get stopped out. And that that happens a lot, right? I'm sure a lot of you have had that happen. And you get in, you get stopped out. And then the real maddening thing is right after you get stopped out, then, gal darn it, the market goes back in the original direction of your trade. And so one of my uh, mentors who was a floor trader in Chicago, I went out there and got an apartment in Chicago, worked with him at the CME. And he used to tell me, Barry, retailers are often right, but at the wrong time. And that's what he meant by that. Yeah, you got the right direction, but you didn't get in at the right time. And so you got shook out of the market before it continued up. You either got in too early or conversely, you got in too late and then you end up chasing the market. So timing is really, really important. In fact, the famous trader W.D. Gann said of the two, he felt time was actually more important than price. So let's talk about cycles today, because that's what cycles are, is timing the market. And it's a multidimensional methodology. In other words, it's not just about the y-axis, although we or the x-axis, we will talk about that. But there's many different types of cycles, and boy, this is a very interesting topic. So let me give you a little outline here, and then we'll touch on each briefly today. Today is meant to be an introduction to these various types of cycles, which you absolutely must know to be a successful trader. Timing, well, as they say, timing is everything, and in trading, <laughs> that's probably more true than anything else. 
So one type of cycle is the seasonal or calendar cycles. Literally, you can look at the calendar on your wall and um, the market makes moves based on that. So we'll talk about that in a moment. Volatility cycles have to do with the range of the market. A lot of people recently now are saying, hey, all of a sudden the market's making these wild swings, these big moves. What's up with that? How do we trade this volatility? Well, that's a good question. And they're asking an excellent question and they're acknowledging whether they know it or not, that, whoa, we went from a period of low volatility now into a period of high volatility. What do I do with that? Coupling, uncoupling cycles. This is where we have different sectors, different markets that trade in a similar way. And then all of a sudden they diverge and they stop trading in a similar pattern or in the same direction. The up-down cycles, that's where you get your higher highs and your higher lows. This is what has to do mostly with the x-axis that I mentioned. And then the fifth one that I hardly ever hear anyone talk about, and boy is this an important one, order chaos cycles. In fact, I would say, I don't know, they're also important, but boy, this is one that causes people to lose a lot of money. It caused me to lose a lot of money for a long time until I finally figured that out. So let's go through each one of these here and give you a little extra detail on it so that you can start using these in your trading. So the first one is your calendar cycle. So this um, probably the most obvious illustration of this one would be the agricultural markets. So um, soft commodities, uh, ags, agricultural markets, you know, you sow your seed in the spring, you wait for your crop to grow over the summer and then you reap the harvest in the fall. And so a lot of people would trade the agricultural markets that way. And they would buy in the spring, sell in the fall. I mean, that's what the farmers do, right? They basically buy the seed, buy all their supplies and everything in the spring, and, um, and that's great. And that seems like that's really a good idea to do that. Well, it's not bad, it's a meta pattern. The retail sector is another calendar cycle. So around December is probably the biggest month for retailers, although it's moving. I mean, they start advertising Christmas in like September now, so it gets crazy. But anyway, as far as the uh, actually um, demarked, demarked, is that a word? Demarcation or when people really think of Okay, this is, you know, the, the month of uh, all the big retailing happening. Uh, December is the month. And so there's a lot of retail companies that actually make all their profits just around those holidays. So maybe October, November, December is when the money starts coming in. And the rest of the year, they're just kind of staying afloat, just staying in business, pretty much breaking even. So that's how big that is for at least some retail companies. So if you're interested in trading those particular stocks, then you may say, okay, those stocks, I'm gonna wait and only trade during that time and buy before that time and then sell afterwards because, well, I know their revenues are gonna go down. That'd be another example. Travel companies, companies have to do with travel. Obviously, uh, there are certain times of the year on the calendar that are more popular for travel than others, spring break, summers and holidays as well. Then the problem is, however, though, it'd be real simple if that's all we had to do. Buy before these times and then sell after these times. But of course, the market's not going to make it that easy for us, are they? Life is never quite that simple, unfortunately. I wish it was. But these cycles are not always consistent. And so you must be able to read a chart and not just read a calendar. So back to the first example, agricultural markets. I used to live in Florida. In Florida, the orange juice industry is a huge industry. And I remember one year we had a freeze. Oh my gosh, that was all over the front page of the newspaper because it was big economic news for the state. So all of a sudden here, you know, sure, the orange juice industry, they're looking forward to uh, nice profits during their agricultural cycle except a monkey wrench got thrown in, the weather. And this happens with agriculture you know, quite frequently. In fact, it happens so frequently. This is basically why futures were created, was so it has its root in the soft commodity market so that farmers could put off their risk a bit because if their crops were destroyed through weather or whatever, then 
they were messed up for a whole year, right? And they'd already invested money ahead of time. So now they're out that money and they made no money. So they're really in a bad place. And so some speculators came along and said, hey, tell you what I'm going to do. I'll pay you for your crops now before you even put the seed in the ground. I'll pay you what you would make in the fall. Well, not quite that much. I'll pay a little bit less because I'm assuming risk here. And a lot of the farmers would say, fantastic. I'll take a little bit less money for the certainty that I'm paid and you take the risk. And yeah, I'll take a little less. I'll, I'll put that risk on you. So anyway, this is why we watch these times during the calendar year for sure. That becomes part of our trading. But then you also have to look at a chart to say, oh, you know, what's happening here in the agriculture market or retail. I mean, this is what happens all the time. People start thinking even in uh, August and September, quite frankly, uh, looking at, okay, what do we project the retail sales will be during the holidays? And people looking at travel, is it up or is it down from last year? And stocks will move based on that. So this is just one of what I call the energies. Energy it refers to the money flow, the energy of money, money flowing in, money flowing out. That's really what the markets are all about. The markets are giant auction places and they work on the basis of auction theory. So this is one thing to look at. Now, another one, another type of cycle is the volatility cycle, which we've been talking a lot about here in recent times. So I call this the XCON cycle and that stands for expansion contraction. Now, most people actually trade this backwards. Not surprising, most traders do most things backwards. That's just why their money goes backwards. So counter, uh, trading is very counterintuitive, by the way. And so that's one of the challenges about it. So how do people trade this backwards? Well, they want to get into markets that are really moving. Makes sense, sure, because we want to make a lot of money. So we want to see markets that are really moving up or really moving down, right? Catch those big moves. All right, here's the problem. By the time you use a scanner, which is mathematically designed to calculate data and then give you a result, it has to have enough data to tell you, yes, we are in a high volatility market. And you are. The problem is volatility is a cycle. So by the time your uh, scanner has calculated all that data, the market's already been in a volatile cycle for a while. And we're getting toward the end of a low, or we could be getting toward the end of a low volatility cycle by the time the scanner registers a high volatility one. So most people often get into high volatility markets and then the market crunches or contracts and they wonder, hey, how come every time I get into a big moving market, that's when it stops moving? And they come up with conspiracy theories that my broker's trading against me or whatever. It's like, nope, it's just there's a cycle here. And you need to understand the cycle. You're trading it upside down or backwards. So I trade inside of contraction. I actually scan for contracting markets to catch the end of the contraction cycle. And then catch the beginning of a new expansion cycle where the market starts moving into a big range. So examples of this would be triangles, love triangles, Bollinger Band squeezes, wedges, things like this. These are you know, big meta price patterns where markets are uh, making narrow range moves. On a day trading basis, this is the basic uh, meta pattern for day trading. And uh, so this is a volatility cycle that all day traders are probably pretty familiar with. So you get high volatility in the morning, big range of price in the morning. And then during lunch, things will slow down. In other words, narrow range during lunch. And then when everybody comes back from lunch, then we get another wide range move. Now that's a meta pattern, meaning that it is an overall pattern, but because it's so well known, guess what? Just by the time everything gets to be known, it stops working. So when I was in Chicago at the CME, um, I mean, literally, we would see the big traders leave for lunch. And then my my instructor at the time, my mentor at the time, he would say, I'd say, okay, let's go get lunch. He said, uh-uh, no, we're not going to lunch. I said, why? All the, you know, 
Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, all these guys have gone to lunch. He said, uh-huh, no, we're going to wait a little while. <laughs> and so sure enough, not every day, but once in a while, maybe once a week or so, those guys would come right back in. They go back out, they go in the hallway, and then they come right back in, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes later. And then they put on some big positions. And you would see this little range, boom, expand. The market make huge moves during lunch. And, you know, he knew to look for that. He knew to look for that. And that's still, I still see that happening today. Just, you don't have to be at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. You can just see it on your charts. Pull up a couple of weeks worth of charts and look for it. And you will see this pattern still to this day. Those opportunities are huge, huge. You will see big moves in the market during lunchtime. Uh, because, again, it's counterintuitive. It's not what most people are looking for. That's where the money is. The money is where most people are not looking. And that's very intentional, by the way. Okay, the uh, next type of cycle is a coupling and uncoupling cycle. So this has to do with various sectors, industries, markets, even various countries, currencies, et cetera, pretty much anything. And we look for whether it is moving in sync with the S&P 500. And you can use others as the market as well, whichever one you want to use as the base. So again, sectors, industries, countries, currencies, commodities, interest rates, they will couple and uncouple with the equity index from time to time. This, these cycles provide really great trading opportunities. And the key is not to trade them when they're coupling. The key is to catch the uncoupling early, the diverging when one market breaks away from the benchmark, because usually there's a reason for that. Could be news, could be economics, could be politics, could be whatever, but it's the beginning of a shift. And we want to get in at the beginning, again, just like all these things, like with the volatility cycle too. You don't want to get it at the end, you want to get it at the beginning, just like the trend is your friend until the end. We don't want to get in at the end of a trend. We want to get in at the beginning. Always, always, always early. That's one of the hallmarks of professional trading, getting in early. And, you know, this is tough for uh, retail traders, tough for all of us, frankly. If you're a human being, it's tough because as human beings, we have a natural um, desire for security. And in trading, that translates into getting a lot of confirmation. So we want to see a lot of things confirmed before we take a trade. It feels like it's less risky, right? The more confirmed something is, the less risky it is. And ironically, exactly the opposite is true in trading. By the time everything's confirmed, whether it's indicators, news, whatever, the deal is done. Professionals have moved on to the next opportunity. You, you've probably heard the slogan, trade the rumor, sell the news. Same concept same concept so as professionals we're getting in when to the amateur it seems more risky and you know what it is risky there is risk involved absolutely there's risk involved but we're comfortable with it we've learned to become comfortable with that and we know that when everything looks confirmed everything looks solid that's the time it is the worst time to get in that's actually ironically the riskiest time to take a trade and we've learned that by losing a lot of money. So frankly, that's how most of us learn. That's how I learned. So yeah, you've got to learn to get a little comfortable with risk. And part of that means having a very clear risk management strategy, a very clear money management strategy. In fact, in Chicago, when I first went there, they told me a scratch is a win. That was one of the first slogans that I learned from them that I never heard anywhere except there. A scratch is a win. And a scratch trade is basically a break-even trade. And what they meant by that was, hey, we know we're getting into all these trades, and most of them are you know, not going to be big winners. So even if I just break even, as long as I kept my rules, right, they would have very clear rules, and both for entries and exits. And so they were so adamant and so obsessed with risk management that even if they had a break-even trade, they considered that a win. Because every time the rules set up, they had to take the trade in order to maintain their probability scenario. If you've got a uh, methodology that has a probability scenario to it and you don't take every single trade, you're screwed. You're messing with the statistics. And that's amazing how yeah, we seem to always mess with the statistics on the wrong end. 
So anyway, a little off track there, but still um, a very poignant point for trading. So this is really a relative strength approach. We're watching for the uh, comparison of the relative strength to outperform, or frankly, sometimes I like to trade it better when it underperforms because markets tend to uh, move faster when they're bearish than bullish. Now, the next type of cycle is the simple up-down cycle. So the up-down cycle is just markets moving up and down, making higher highs, higher lows, lower highs, lower lows. Markets tend to make bigger price moves and spend more time, there we are again, time and price, in the direction of the trade. They make smaller price moves and spend less time against the trend. So I'll show you an example of this on a chart here real quickly so you'll see what I mean. But now is when it starts to get real interesting because now we combine these up-down cycles with volatility cycles that expand and contract. We combine them with order chaos cycles, which we'll get to in a minute. And we combine them with calendar cycles. So here's what I mean. This is a cycle low. That's a cycle high. There's a cycle low. So absolutely key to be buying the final low. In other words, you want to, wouldn't want to buy here. That's not the right time to buy. We want to wait for this time and I'll by the way here in about 20 minutes I'll show you how to get my timing indicator as well for free by the way I won't even charge you for it I normally do but for you guys I'll give it to you for free today so in this type of uh, in an uptrend the market spends more time time there we go <laughs> going up than it does going down it's very important a lot of people don't really think about that they should think oh sure it's, it covers more range more price range going up than down but they don't think about the time aspect of it. That's very important, very important to determine whether the market's going to continue to make a higher high if you get in over here. Because if it spends a lot of time coming down and it go, keeps going sideways here, that means that uh, the bullish energy that was established here is now dissipated. It's dissipated, it's gone. We want that bullish energy to be dominant and to remain dominant here so that the reason this retraces, there's only two reasons we'd want it to retrace. Number one, retail shorting, amateur shorting. Number two, profit taking. And when you get those two types of um, reasons for the market to move down, then it's not going to move down very much and it's not going to move down for very long. On the other hand, if we get professional shorting up here, no bueno for our long position, right? Because now we're going to have big volume coming in, the smart money. I don't want to, you know, buy against the smart money. So this is one way to tell. This is a price pattern of both time and price. Everybody knows about the price, but look at the time. How much time does it spend going down? And then, um, oh, as I mentioned, yes, one of the best tools I've ever created is my cycle indicator. It actually does catch every single cycle high and low with amazing accuracy. And it, what it really does is helps you to prevent being stopped out. So if you find yourself getting stopped out a lot, then this really is a, a great tool for you. Again, I'll be happy to give it to you for free. It works on any charting platform because we're really just taking an indicator that's on every charting platform I've seen and then modifying it, making some adjustments to it. So I'll show you how to do that on a, a follow-up free webinar along with a complete tutorial of how to trade it. So you can take this and integrate it into whatever um, trading method you're currently using. Add it as one more tool to give you precise entries, triggers into basically any type of trade pattern, whether it's a trend trade, triangle, head and shoulders. I mean, I use this for every entry of every trade pattern I take because that's how accurate it is. Now, the last type of cycle I want to share with you today is uh, one of the most important and one of the least talked about. It's the order chaos cycle. So you may have heard of the book Random Walk Down Wall Street. Great book, very informative, became very popular. And basically what they posited was that the market is, well, a random walk. So what I, I meant by that was that you can't really predict what the market's going to do in the future because all information that could be known about the market's already built into the price. Markets are perfectly efficient. 
So, you know, that kind of threw the uh, industry into a tailspin for a little while because people thought, well, dang, why even trade them? And that's true. Why even trade them? <laughs> the problem is there's another school of thought, and that school of thought follows people like W.D. Gann and so forth that says, oh, no, the market is perfectly orderly and predictable. And they use this based on mathematics and uh, geometry. And some of the people follow this school of thought. They have been able to predict the future of the market out years in advance, the exact day and time. And pretty amazing. So anyway, I read research on both of these schools of thought. Of course, they both have their examples, and it all looked great. And you start to look at that, and you're saying, huh, wait a minute. They both look great. They both make sense. They both have logic behind them. They both have a lot of examples to support them. And yet, they completely contradict each other. So how can that be? So that's when I came up with this idea. Well, both views continue to have followings. Both do have merit, but at different times. And that's the operative word, different times. And that's when I realized there's a cycle. Oh, timing, cycle. So sometimes the market is in a random walk. In fact, I'll tell you, most of the time, the market's in a random walk, most of the time. So most of the time, you, there's really no probability scenario to be had. And therefore, you should not be trading. And you need to stand aside. You know, I think it was Van Tharp who said, good trading is boring. Not very motivating, but he's right. So professional traders actually trade a lot less than most people think we do. Because we're waiting. We're like that, uh, like the lion in the, the jungle, you know, just waiting and waiting and waiting, hiding in the tall grass waiting for the stray antelope to wander away from the crowd. And we're not looking for the strongest antelope. We're looking for the one that's limping. <laughs> you know, that's what lions do, right? They look for the prey, the weakest, easiest target. Because the lion's not doing this for a sport. The lion's doing this to feed its family. And that's what we're doing. We're feeding our family. So we are looking for the low-hanging fruit in trading. And most of the time... There's nothing that you should be doing. The market is just moving around randomly, chaotically. A bunch of amateurs buying and shorting, getting stopped out, not knowing what they're doing, right? We want to wait for the professional money to come in because the professional money, they trade with a system, a method with rules. And guess what that does? They have an orderly way of trading. And when they start trading, that creates an orderly pattern on the chart. Charts reflect the psychology of the people trading those charts. They're almost in a way like Rorschach ink black tests. And so we want to wait for the smart money. They also, by the way, have so much size to bring in that they come in with what's called accumulation. They can't bring all their size in at one time. Otherwise, they move the market up too fast and they can't get the low prices for all of their orders. So that again, that creates that stair step type of pattern that we like. So this is why overtrading is the cardinal sin. And man, I got to tell you, I'll usually use my confessors today. This was my biggest challenge in trading, overtrading. Because I like to trade. I still love to trade. But the problem is, like I said, most of the time the market's in a random walk. So we get really tempted, we get antsy, we get impatient, and we started overtrading. And that is what kills you. It's what killed me for a long, long, long time. And so, for example, here's the way that this would, um, in a practical experience, um, you would experience it the way I experienced it. I would make money for a while and I'd say, hey, I'm making some money. Cool. Wow. I'm the trading god. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that was uh, you said too early because then I keep trading the same method and all of a sudden I start losing money and sometimes I'd lose all the money I had won and sometimes I'd, I'd get back more than I had made. I'm like, dang, trading the same, me same method, same system. Why is it now losing money? And some people would say, oh, well, it just has natural dry down periods. And I realized, yeah, there's some of that. That's part partially true. But you know what? I think the whole drawdown thing is a little overinflated. I think the reason that uh, a lot of people have drawdowns is simply because they're trading during times when the market is a random walk, when it's in a chaos cycle. So this, of course, begs the question, well, dang, all right, that makes sense, but how do I wait? How do I know? 
how do I know when we're in a uh, chaos cycle or an orderly cycle? So I'm going to share that with you right now. An orderly cycle I define as this. We have five energies in the market. Again, the energy of money, money flow, that are all aligned. These are all moving in the bullish direction or bearish direction. So here they are. I'm going to give you my little list here. And these are the only five energies of money flow that I look at. So the first one is trend. Good place to start. Which side of the market do we want to be on, right? The second one is momentum. Now, momentum, crucially important. Trend is fine, but trend's like you walking north. You could turn around and walk south within one footstep. Same things with trend. You can, I mean, you probably had this experience too, where you, you can watch a market trend up and up and up and up and up and up until you get in. And then as soon as you get in, well, that's when the trend ends. I mean, I know that used to happen to me all the time so much that I said, I am a perfectly imperfect trader. If I would just take the opposite side of my own trades, I'd be wildly profitable. So, so trend alone, and I wrote the book, Trend Trading for Dummies. So I'm here to tell you, trend is great, but, and actually I include this in the book, you've got to only trade strong trends. Weak trends will fail. Those are the ones that fail. So learn how to determine a strong trend. They are the ones that will continue to make a higher high after you get in. And think about that. I mean, this is one of those very few things I would say that can change your trading overnight. If you learn how to trade only strong trends, then a strong trend, by the way, is one that, again, has professional money behind it. It's a lot of velocity in the market, a lot of volume in the market, big money coming in. And you catch that early, early in a new trend, early in a new momentum move. You catch that puppy, boom, market makes a higher high after you get in. I always lock in some profits right, right at that next cycle high. Not everything, but I'm going to lock in some profits get some money in my wallet, move my stop to break even. And now, just think, if you could do that on every single trade, oh my gosh. I mean, wouldn't that change your trading overnight? Again, now we're not even in the territory of a scratch is a win anymore. Now we're in a win is a win, even if it's a little win. At least I made some money. Then the third one is cycles. So after we've got a trend that is strong, now the question is, okay, when do I get in? In other words, I want to buy the final low or the final high. Don't want to get in too early, get stopped out, or too late and chase the market. You do that with my cycle indicator that I'll give you. Number fourth energy is support resistance. So we're going to look to buy off support, short off resistance. And then number five is what I call the fractal energy. And that's where if everything is bullish on one chart, on one time interval, then I go to the next higher time interval, and I just make sure that the higher time interval is bullish as well. If it is, I've got a five out of five trade. You can actually think of this as a five-step checklist for trading. In fact, that's exactly what it is. So when all five are bullish, now we have what? An orderly market. If you got trend up, momentum down, cycles in the middle of the range, we're not at a support resistance level, and the next higher time frame is just flat, that's a chaotic market, and we stay out of that. So we measure these energies with charts so that we can do it in a rule-based manner. We use it to um, be objective, right? Therefore, we use indicators because indicators are math. And not, not that there's anything magical about indicators, because there's not. They're not magical. They're just mathematical. But the beauty of that is, again, if it's math, well, we can create rules. If it's math, it's objective. And so indicators don't make us money directly, but they do give us an exact number. And this allows us to create a method that's objective, rule-based, and duplicable, by the way. So the same thing I see, you will see. There's no uh, discretion involved. So we use it to establish a probability scenario. And basically we're looking, as I said, for all of them to be aligned, give the trade a score of one to five, the higher the score, the higher the probability. It's like taking each trade to court. We have five, oh, here's the operative word, independent witnesses. So this is an important point. You cannot do this by just putting any five indicators on a chart. So there's a little strategy behind this. If you were to, for example, put five trend indicators on the chart, okay, you wouldn't have the same thing because you'd actually, yeah, you got five indicators, but they're all measuring the same energy, which is direction. 
trend. That'd be like putting five speedometers on the dashboard of your car, right? I mean, it's redundant. That's silly. None of us would do that. So same thing here. These particular five energies that I just gave you, these energies work because they are non, not correlated to each other. That's what gives you a probability scenario. All right, so let me show you how it works here. Give you a quick little uh, chart example because picture's worth a thousand words. So here's our list of five energies. And here's my shorter term chart. Over here's my longer term chart. So this, by the way, this uh, red line here, that's my 50 period simple moving average. I use that as a line in the sand between a bull and bear market. And all I use is moving average, some support resistance, and two indicators. That's it. Two indicators. So we've got uh, price going down, 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 down. Boom, pops up above the 50 MA for the first time and retraces. So we've got energy number one. We're starting a new trend. Okay, why? Because if we use the 50 MA as our line in the sand between a bull and bear market as our trend indicator. So, all right, we're early. That's the earliest we can get into a new confirmed trend. Number two, momentum. So here's my momentum indicator. When market pops above the 50 MA and retraces, it stays above the zero line. There's zero. If this were to go back to the zero line, I would say, yeah, we've got a new trend, but we have no strength behind it. Therefore, I'm not going to trade the, I'm not going to take the trade. I'm done. At step two, I'm done. I don't even need to go to step three because it's not a strong trend. I will not be follow through. In this case, though, thankfully, it is above zero. Sure, it retraces a little bit, but it's like I said before, all we're getting here is a little profit taking, a little retail shorting. We're not getting professional shorting here. So, and that's indicated by this indicator. All right, so we've got a trend that is strong. We're early in it. Now, number three, we go to our timing indicator. Here's our bare bones version of it. The one I give you will be a little more sophisticated than this one. But uh, we're coming down, boop. Pops back up. Awesome. Dude, that's a cycle low. Nice. So that's the time we want to get in. Number five or four, we were hitting a support level. That's red line is the 50% Fibonacci level. So all first four of those are bullish. Then we go to number five. Now we get to our next higher time frame. And our next higher time frame, I'm not interested really in trend. Trend, the 50 MA is down over here. But I don't care about that because trend is really a lagging indicator. And this is a longer term chart, right? So let's say, I don't know what time intervals these are anymore, but let's say the chart on the left was a five minute chart, then the chart on the right would probably be a 15 minute chart. I like a one to three ratio or one to four ratio. So this chart already is gonna be a little slower. If it's a you know one to five or one to three ratio, then it's got one bar here for every three bars over here. And moving averages, are lagging. So I don't care about that. What I look for over here is momentum. Look how momentum is screaming up. Strength. Strength here, strength there. That's what I want. When you get strength, bullish strength on both markets, well, that's when the market's going to pop. That's what I want it to do. I want my PL to go up fast. Going up fast is more fun than going up slow. Plus, you don't have to have so much patience or psychological discipline. So when you get momentum being bullish or bearish on both time frames concurrently at the very moment you enter, wow, that just dramatically increases the odds of your trade right there. So that's what I use on the longer time frame. And that's what it looks like. And that's it. One, two, three, four, five, counting to five. I think we can all count to five. <laughs> all right. So, um, you know, high probability trading, there's never any certainties in the market. We're always trading probabilities. But what we want to know is, is the market, you know, do we have a high probability of the market doing what we want to do this time? This time meaning when you are taking a trade. And so the way we do that is we wait for the alignment of the five energies. That definitely puts the odds on your side. And it's easy. Oh, I shouldn't say easy. I don't like ever saying trading is easy because psychologically it can be challenging. But technically, it's pretty darn simple. Let's use the word simple because this is my five energy method can actually be summarized in one sentence. That's how complex it is. Looking for an early trend that is strong, energy of momentum too. At the right time, so we don't get in too early or too late. We don't want to get stopped out or chase the market. That's our cycle indicator, step three. Support at our back, 
meaning literally support levels, and then confirmed by the bigger scale, the next higher time frame. Methods very robust and adaptable. I use this for stocks, commodities, options, currencies, futures. I trade all five of those markets. Personally, I do investing, swing trading, and day trading personally. It's simple. It's objective. We're just counting to five. And the nice thing is all markets, all time frames, they work on the base or the same basic principle of auction theory, supply, demand. We want dominant buying or dominant selling. We want it to be clear. Once we got that, that's when we'll trade. If that's not in place, if that's not clear, we wait till it is or we look at another market where it is. So here are my freebies for you today. I kind of dropped the ball. I didn't bring anything to sell. I realized I kind of screwed up. So sorry, I, uh, I don't have anything to sell today. Dang, that's... Uh, Unfortunate, but anyway, well, maybe it's not unfortunate. <laughs> anyway, um, here's my email address. So if you have any questions for me, please. I love talking with traders, by the way. I love helping traders. It's my life. I really enjoy it. My dad was a stock trader. He started teaching me when I was eight years old. And it's something we shared our whole lives, a passion for this. And uh, I still am passionate about it. So this is what I love to do now is to, to give back or pay forward or however you want to call it. So you'll never bother me. You, you now have a friend in the trading world. You can email anytime, barry at topdogtrading.com, and I'd love to hear from you. Now, here's my free gift for you today. I'm actually giving you one of my courses for free. It's a five-day video correspondence course. The topic of it is how professionals treat different than amateurs. So made a lot of references today in, in uh, this very thing, didn't I, of how oh, professionals do this, amateurs do that. Well, this deep dives into that very distinction. So you're going to get five videos, not a long course, a little mini course. At the end of each video is an interactive quiz. I want to make sure you got it right. The dollars are in the details. And it's not just a theoretical course. This is a very practical course because in it, you're going to get one of my favorite trade setups. I call it the rubber band trade. And I'll give you all the rules for getting in, getting out, all that stuff. Great trade. I still take this trade every single day it sets up. I love this trade. It has a very, very high win-loss ratio. So you're going to get all that from me. So hopefully you can start making some money even before you do buy a course from me if you choose to. And then, of course, as I mentioned several times, my personal cycle indicator, um, that's presented on the follow-up webinar. Our next one actually is this Saturday. And then we have another one next Tuesday, two different days, two very different times of day to accommodate people from around the world. And again, that's free. No charge for that. I'll set up, I'll help you set up the indicator in your charts and then show you how to trade a complete tutorial. Um, takes about an hour for the whole thing to get the thing set up in your charts and to show you how to trade it. And here's the URL, topdogtrading.com forward slash free dot HTML. And uh, yeah, I don't, let me see if I can type that in here. And uh, if anybody, I don't have much time here, uh, extra time, but if anybody has any questions you want to ask, feel free to go ahead and type them in right now. And um, I'm not going to uh, take too much leeway and go over time, but I do have, I think, one minute. <laughs> and I'll be happy to take one minute and um, go ahead and answer any questions that come in. So, and okay, there we go. So I just typed in that URL to the chat box. And I'm typing it into the question box here as well. Oops, there we go. There. So the chat box is the best way to get it because it is a clickable link there. And I think it's a clickable link. Well, maybe not. Yeah, it is. So if you click on that, you'll go straight to the page. And if um, you can't see that, I know some of the mobile devices don't show the chat box with GoToWebinar. I just bring up a separate web browser and you can um, pull up Chrome, Safari, Firefox, Internet Explorer, whatever, manually type in topdogtrading.com forward slash free.html. Make sure you do put in the .html. That is required. Otherwise, I'm not actually sure what would happen, but you won't go to the right page. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you, Jurgen, Javier, Don. Appreciate that. Thank you for the kind words, and you're very, very welcome. Okay, so I'm not seeing any uh, questions. I'm just seeing some nice, uh, kind words, and I do appreciate those. So very good. So in that case, I'll just uh, say thank you to all of you. Thank you to Traders Talk Live. 
and um, and turn it back over to our moderator.